This episode brought to you by healthwithdronetech.com. If you're familiar with collagen and its role in aging, then you probably know that its production decreases 10% in our bodies every decade. What most don't know, however, is that the typical collagen supplements found on store shelves are often filled with harmful ingredients and chemicals that make us look like we're aging quicker. These store-bought brands typically only have one type of collagen when the body needs multiple types of collagen for effective anti-aging. This is the same for supposed collagen packed foods like broth. It's like fueling your car with power steering fluid, but not oil, gas, or any other fluid and expecting the car to run. This is why I highly recommend healthwithdronetech.com. Users, including myself, experience a more youthful appearance, decreased wrinkles, and smoother skin within days of taking this amazing multi-collagen. It promotes effective anti-aging through the use of five types of high quality collagen mixed into one. You need to get healthwithdronetech.com. Try it today for 51% off by going to www.healthwithdronetech.com or by visiting the link below. Make sure to do it within the next 24 hours and get 51% off. Welcome back, everybody, and happy birthday to President Trump. I'm Drone Tech, and I thought today would be a good day to go back and look at all the times that Trump was right and the Democrat Party state media was wrong. Kicking it off at number five, remember the time that Jim Acosta and his cohorts freaked out when Trump warned that not only would Confederate statues be targeted for removal, but also our most honored founders, such as George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now are we going to take down his statue? So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. I want you to just clarify for our viewers uh, briefly the distinction to be made between slave-owning presidents and founding fathers and uh, slave owners who fought to keep the, that peculiar institution intact. Right. So uh, when you are in rebellion against the founding ideals of the country, um, that is vastly different than being a creator of those founding ideals, as imperfect as Washington was, as imperfect as Jefferson was. To focus on uh, similarities, again, much further down the list is to misunderstand the prioritization of the moral uh, elements that are at the top of the list. In this press conference and multiple times on Twitter, President Trump has drawn comparisons between Confederate General Robert E. Lee and President George Washington. Oh boy, there's that trademark undeserved arrogance and condescension. It makes perfect sense sense, right? I mean, the founders weren't Confederate generals, so there's no way they would ever be targeted by those same insane violent communist mobs. Overnight, a group of people tore down the George Washington statue in Northeast Portland. This was near Northeast 57th and Sandy Boulevard about 11 last night. A Fox 12 viewer sent us this video of the statue of the nation's third president as it was pulled down. While Thomas Jefferson wrote, all men are created equal, he also owned as many as 600 slaves. A historic Virginia church, as we told you yesterday, where George Washington frequently worshipped, will remove a memorial plaque honoring America's first president. Where he spent 20 years of his life. The church will also take down a memorial honoring Robert E. Lee, but where does this political correctness stop? We're going to have to make sacrifices. We're going to have to change our traditions, our history. Of course, completely unsurprisingly, Trump was right. Obviously, anybody using this warped logic to take down Confederate statues could easily use it against any American history or symbol. Up to and including Mount Rushmore or even the American flag. Coming in at number four, remember when Trump warned about Antifa using cans of soup as weapons against police and generally anybody they don't like? And once again, the media responded with their attitude without investigating the claim at all, mocking Trump for such an absurd claim that, as anyone who follows Antifa's action knows, is utterly believable. Unfortunately for these hacks, one Antifa or BLM member felt perfectly comfortable showing off his can of soup, confirming literally everything Trump said. Uh, Tiger, you have been out here. Did you have you been out here the last couple of days? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been here uh, all four nights. Uh, I'm just standing here today with uh, soup for my family, and uh, we're just you know watching all of this unfold. It's very unfortunate. 
You're not planning on using that, are you? Throwing Absolutely. it at the police? Like I said, it's for my family. Literally for your family. Yeah. At number three, we have the Lafayette Square story, which is mind blowing on multiple levels because what we essentially had there was a real insurrection in the form of attacks on the White House and the DC area at large, which included an attempt to burn down a church. They mocked Trump for erecting a wall to protect the White House and joked that Trump was hiding in a bunker. The media myth making continued with an erroneous claim that Trump had used tear gas against allegedly peaceful protesters in order to make a photo op at that same church that Antifa almost burned down. So right outside the White House, the president wanted to speak in the Rose Garden, rubber bullets, flashbangs, tear gas deployed to disperse the crowd, a peaceful crowd. Uh, and then um, the president, it became clear he did all that so that he would be able to walk across the street uh, for a photo op with uh, members of the White House staff outside St. John's Church where he held up a Bible. How did you feel as you saw all of this unfold? I was thinking that the critical focus of history will judge Donald Trump as a presidential aberration. Walking from the White House through the tear gas laden Lafayette Park to the steps of the Church of the Presidents, St. John's, and holding up that Bible would have made P.T. Barnum proud. Lives were endangered for that picture. You know, tear gas, rubber bullets, flashbang grenades. We saw people getting hit. People got hurt. People got hurt. A failure of presidential leadership at a time when this country, when we the people need it more than ever, perhaps in our lifetime. Tonight, with flashbang grenades going off and tear gas in the air, the president of the United States, a wannabe wartime president, he calls them thugs. Who is the thug here? Hiding in a bunker? Hiding behind a suit? Who is the thug? It turns out that the inspector general found no evidence of the media's insistent claims that were made just before a national election for president. The investigation released this week by Interior Department IG Mark Lee Greenblatt says that the U.S. Park Police and the U.S. Secret Service deemed it necessary to remove protesters from the park on June 1st in order to install anti-scale fencing. The decision was reached after at least 49 U.S. Park Police were injured while policing protests days earlier. <laughs> wow. 49 injured police that the media never took issue with or blamed on left-wing protesters who were literally attacking the White House and burning down DC. The drive-by media strikes again. We're getting into the real good stuff now with number two. It turns out hydrochloroquine does work. Hydroxychloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, which I think, as you know, it's a great Malaria drug, it's worked unbelievably. It's a powerful drug on malaria. Uh, and there are signs that it works on this, some very strong signs. Is hydrochloroquine preventative against this virus? Yes or no? You know, as I've said many times, Margaret, the data are really just at best suggestive. As President of the United States, your words carry enormous weight in this country and around the world. And while you acknowledge you're not a physician, you do promote these medicines extensively here. How do you not go so far as to be giving medical advice? Why is MSNBC, why is CNN, why is Fox, why is any network running these press conferences where he keeps talking about an unproven drug? A lot of people would say, follow the money. There's got to be some sort of financial tie to someone somewhere. Let me show you the president of the United States is not taking hydroxychloroquine. So he's not taking something that his own administration has said will kill you. Hydrochloroquine. Yes, yeah. hydrochloroquine. I can't believe it. I just stocked up on Clorox and now he comes up with this. Wow. I, I can't believe anybody with a brain would take that stuff, but you seem like an intelligent guy. You're a representative in Congress. Yeah. Why would you take that drug? There are terrible consequences. <laughs> But happens to be wrong. 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 Thanks to a new study, we now know, long after Trump was already savaged and damaged by the media lies, that hydrochloroquine combined with Alzheimer's therapy at higher doses improves survival by nearly 200%. Just think about all the people that could have been saved if not for the media's blind partisanship. Just think of all the people banned and censored in the public square. Again, the drive-by media does what
what it does. They do their damage, speed away, and only months later are they corrected, long after the damage has been done and they've reaped all the benefits. And finally, at number one, the Wuhan lab leak theory. While the media and Democrats insisted on calling it the Trump virus, we all knew the truth. Why do you keep calling this the Chinese virus? Why do you keep using this? Because it comes from it's China. Racist. It's not racist at all, no, not at all. It comes from China. Months after countless scientists, conservatives, and Republicans had been demonized and censored, we find out that the Wuhan lab leak theory is not only possible, but the most probable explanation to the worldwide outbreak. All right, folks, that's all I have for this one. Thanks for watching. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all tomorrow.